Bonjour, my name is Nadine. I'm 17 years old, and I want to tell you my story. Do you remember your first school love and your first time? I thought I wasn't going to get either, but... Watch this video to the end and learn how the first sex with your best friend can turn your whole life around. Until recently, I hated everyone and everything around me. If it wasn't for Mallory, my best friend, I swear I would have hung myself from the school gate out of boredom. If you look at Mallory and me from the outside, you can never even assume that we've been friends since first grade. You know why? I'm a goody two-shoes. So cute, it makes you sick. And she's goth or punk, or even all at once. She was always there to protect me if someone got too aggressive and tried to lay a hand on me. And in junior school, I remember she took me to all the games. She was, of course, our tactic leader, the leader of the class, a real Girl Scout, if you know what I mean. That's why we sometimes fight. We argue so much that sparks fly, almost to a fight, with rage and shouting. Just at the beginning of my story lies one such argument. It was my first time we had a fight in front of everyone. I was just joking that my husband and kids were waiting for me a little bit longer, and all of a sudden, Mallory pushed me against the wall and started yelling at me like even my mother never yelled. Do you have a friend you couldn't live without? Did you argue with her so terribly? If so, you must understand me. I hated Mallory at that moment. I wasn't ashamed of it. My best friend made our fight a joke. I couldn't find the strength to forgive her, even when she apologized. Both that day and later, I needed time to step back and think to calm the chaos in my head. My social circle had previously consisted only of Mallory and her friends. Now it was just me, my mother, and the geek from the parallel with which we were preparing for exams. My mother was always very annoyed with Mallory, and she was insanely conservative, so she forbade Mallory to go near the house. That's why I didn't go out, so she wouldn't be waiting for me at the library. That's how the nerdy Lily got into my bedroom. My mother had no complaints about the mousy girl, which is even mousier than her own daughter. However, I whined to her more about how much I missed my friend than I studied. I missed her terribly. So when Mallory threw a rock at my window in the middle of the night and invited me to the party as if nothing had happened, I gave up and just asked Lily to cover for me. I immediately wished I hadn't come. There was a whole crowd of people I didn't know and there was no Lily. I had become attached to her in the short days we had been together. But Mallory was always with me, and that was just as well, because I couldn't get enough of my longing for her. My friend first drew me into dancing, then gave me wine, weak and sweet. But I was pleased with how drunk I was. I even agreed to play spin the bottle. A dozen people sat in a circle on the floor. I knew half of them. Almost everyone was either drinking or smoking, laughing loudly and teasing each other. I could feel Mallory's heavy, warm hand on my waist. In the end, something happened that I was a little afraid of. The bottle spun round and pointed the shiny neck at Mallory sitting next to me. She made a joke and turned her whole body to me. I could feel her breath on my cheek, hot and impatient. The kiss was almost the same, as if Mallory had put the last of her rage and all of her love for me into it. Her hands rested on my shoulders, and finally she bit me lightly, her eyes twinklingly mischievously. I came home thinking about my best friend had stolen my first kiss. It was strange, you know? Some new and unusual feeling was growing in my chest like a small flower. You will never believe what it had led me to. Just a couple of days before the exam, my mother left home for the whole day. What would you do at home in case of such a situation? Then you probably already guessed what I was planning. Lily and I were going to hang out, combine a girls' night with study, but I was already doing everything with a book in my hands. However, I have changed a little since that party. I've become bolder or something. 
I even got a bottle of wine from Mallory and prepared it for our party. Mallory tried to get me to tell her who I was going to hang out with, but I didn't say anything. Lily and I had a good chat, sitting in front of the fireplace in the living room, discussing everything in the world, tactfully avoiding exams. I don't remember who mentioned the topic of relationship and boys first. We started talking about it. I confessed to my new friend that the previous one had taken my first kiss. Lily blushed charmingly as she looked away, and it seemed to me that I was embarrassing her with my first kiss. I wanted to take a little initiative for the first time in my life, so I leaned over too little, like Hilary Duff, Lily, and kissed her. Without even asking permission, although we usually didn't even hug. I liked the way the kiss felt. Lily was much more gentle and pleasant than the pushy Mallory. Perhaps that's why it wasn't just one kiss. It happened then, and I will never forget that night. My knees were shaking, and I even started crying at one point. Lily sobbed and laughed at once, but she turned out to be so sensitive and caring that I literally melted with love for her. We were so tired, not so much from the sex itself, but from the acuteness of our own experiences that we barely made it to my room. The path through the corridor was endless on our wobbly legs, and we went to sleep in the same bed. We woke up side by side, and at first, I was afraid to open my eyes. No, I found the strength to ask Lily to leave. She obeyed and only kissed my hand tremulously. As soon as the house was empty, I felt the last of my emotions shaken out of me. I thought about everything for a really long time, even forgetting about my studies. I just didn't have any strength left. When my mother came home and found an empty wine bottle and hickeys on my neck, she made such a fuss that I almost died of fright right there. My mother never yelled at me like that, using third-degree methods. Slaps, cigarette burns in the face, and screams in the ear. She found out that I was at a party with Mallory and immediately blamed her for everything. I heard a lot of new things about myself. That I was a liberal scum and that I allowed myself sodomy and that I had disappointed her and that she would never forgive me. I was literally sick of my mother breathing in my face and the lump in my throat was impossible to swallow. I swear I tried to argue with her, but it took all my strength to hold back the tears. The red marks on my mother's hands burned on my cheeks, and my lips still tingled from Lily's kiss. But I only allowed myself to cry when mom let me go into the room. Taking away the phone and promising to kill me if this happens again, and the daughter of the devil or whoever punks worship would appear near our house. Both Lily and Mallory called me, and I heard them, but I couldn't answer them. I somehow managed to hold out for a few days before the exam, but as soon as I went to school and sat down at the table, I saw Mallory's narrow back in a black t-shirt in the next row, and Lily's slumped shoulders not far from her, and the tears came out of me like a fountain. Mallory volunteered to take me to the nurse, and we had our first serious conversation on the way. I never thought that my friend could utter such words, and that the words were addressed to me and no one else. I, in turn, confessed to her what had happened that night, and it was obvious that hurt my jealous friend, but she tried not to show it. In the nurse's office, she told me straight out that she had always liked me, and that she had hoped that our kiss would encourage me to do more. And it encouraged. Only alas, not to her, but she's happy for us. And right there in the nurse's office, I realized that it was time to change something in life. For the first time, I didn't care about exams. Spoiler, I passed them brilliantly anyway. Instead, I was dizzy with a new crush. At graduation, Mallory got her high school diploma with poor grades and made an obscene gesture to everyone who messed up her school life. And there she got down on one knee in front of me and loudly invited Lily and me to live with her in her rented apartment near my college. So to speak, in close quarters, but with love. You should have seen the face of my mother, who at the same moment jumped up from her seat and began to utter curses. Yes, school security was forced to remove her from the event. I never saw her again, 
and even my things were taken away from my home by Mallory and Lily. Yesterday, Lily and I went to the rock store that Mallory now runs and picked out posters for the house. Our house. Where I live with both my best friends. One of whom is my first and most true love. Did you like my story? Then subscribe to our channel. Put likes. Click on the bell. We will be happy to have new subscribers. See you in new stories.